Elon Musk just revealed something so insane about Flight 10 that SpaceX engineers are calling it impossible. Yet they're doing it anyway on August 24th. Picture this. A 400-foot rocket will flip completely upside down in space, then fire 33 engines while inverted. One wrong move. $3 billion explosion. But here's what really shocked engineers. Musk is deliberately breaking the rocket on purpose to test something that could get us to Mars in half the time. What is he planning that's so crazy even rocket scientists think he's lost his mind? Let's dive right in. So what exactly is this impossible maneuver that has rocket engineers calling Musk crazy? Here's what's happening on August 24th that defies everything we thought we knew about rockets. Picture this, a 400-foot-tall, super-heavy booster that's taller than the Statue of Liberty will separate from Starship at 3,000 miles per hour. Then it does something that should be physically impossible. It flips completely upside down while 33 Raptor engines coordinate a perfect backflip maneuver. But here's the part that shocked engineers. This flip actually uses 40% less fuel than traditional methods. How is that even possible? Traditional rockets fight gravity the entire way down, burning massive amounts of propellant. Musk's upside-down approach flips this concept, literally. By inverting the booster, it uses gravity as an ally, then fires engines in the opposite direction for maximum deceleration efficiency. Think of it like the difference between stopping a speeding car by riding the brakes versus doing a controlled drift to bleed off speed. The physics actually work, but one wrong calculation and you get a $3 billion fireball. This fuel savings translates to something game-changing, 20 to 30 tons of additional payload capacity. That's equivalent to carrying an entire school bus worth of extra cargo to space on every single flight. But Musk isn't stopping there. He's planning something even more dangerous. Mid-flight, SpaceX will deliberately sabotage their own rocket. They're shutting off one of the three main landing engines on purpose. Why would they intentionally cripple a billion-dollar spacecraft? Because they're testing something that could mean the difference between life and death on Mars. If backup engines from the middle ring can instantly take over when a primary engine fails, Starship becomes virtually indestructible. Multiple engine failures still landing safely. This isn't just about reliability. It's about survival 140 million miles from Earth. When you're on Mars, there's no rescue mission, no backup plan, no second chances. The rocket either works perfectly or the crew dies. Period. SpaceX learned this lesson the hard way during Flight 9, when a $100 component called a pressurization system diffuser destroyed a $3 billion spacecraft. On Mars, that kind of failure means everyone aboard is dead. But that's not even the craziest part of Flight 10. SpaceX is dropping eight Starlink simulators during this flight. These aren't real satellites. They're practice dummies designed to burn up on re-entry. So why practice with fakes? Because Musk is preparing for something massive that could change the world overnight. Each simulator weighs exactly the same as a real Starlink satellite and follows identical deployment sequences. Current Falcon 9 rockets can only carry 23 satellites per launch. But if this test succeeds, a single Starship could deploy 400 satellites in one mission. That's a 17x improvement. We're talking about blanketing the entire planet with high-speed internet in just 10 launches instead of 170. The economic impact is staggering. SpaceX currently spends $67 million per Falcon 9 launch. With Starship, that cost drops to an estimated $2 million per launch. A 97% cost reduction that could make satellite internet cheaper than your current broadband. But there's an even bigger secret hidden in this mission that nobody's talking about. Buried in the technical details is perhaps the most important test of all. SpaceX will restart a Raptor engine in the vacuum of space after it's been sitting dormant. This might sound routine, but it's actually the key to becoming a multi-planetary species. Mars missions require multiple precise engine burns over months-long journeys. Earth to Mars isn't a straight shot. It's a complex orbital dance requiring exact timing. Miss one burn by even a few seconds and you're floating in space forever. No rocket engine has ever been designed to reliably restart after months in the extreme cold of space. Fuel freezes, seals crack, 
components fail. But if Musk cracks this code, Mars becomes achievable. The test is deceptively simple. Fire the engine, shut it down, let it sit in space for an hour, then restart it. If it works, we're one giant leap closer to becoming a multiplanetary species. But here's where Musk crosses the line from genius to absolute insanity. SpaceX is deliberately removing heat shield tiles from Starship before re-entry. They're literally stripping away the rocket's armor to see what happens during the most dangerous part of the flight. During re-entry, Starship experiences temperatures of 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit, hot enough to melt copper. Without proper heat shielding, the rocket becomes a meteor streaking across the sky. Why would they risk destroying a billion-dollar spacecraft? Because they're testing revolutionary active cooling tiles that could make current heat shields obsolete. Instead of just absorbing heat like traditional tiles, these new systems pump coolant through microscopic channels to actively reject heat. If this works, it changes everything. Current heat shields need replacement after every flight, costing millions and taking weeks. These active cooling tiles could last hundreds of flights with minimal maintenance. But here's the terrifying gamble. They're testing this system at the most dangerous moment possible during actual re-entry at maximum heat. If the test fails, Starship disintegrates in a fireball visible from space. It's like removing your car's brakes to test a new stopping system while driving down a mountain at 100 miles per hour. SpaceX added strange, functional catch fittings to Starship sides, special mechanical hooks with an undisclosed purpose. The official explanation is vague. To test how these fittings handle heat and stress? But rocket experts are speculating something incredible. These fittings might be designed to catch Starship midair using the launch tower's mechanical arms. Picture this. A 165-foot spacecraft weighing 100 tons being caught by giant robot arms while moving at hundreds of miles per hour. It sounds impossible, but SpaceX already proved they can catch the booster this way. If they can catch both the booster and the upper stage, landing gear becomes unnecessary. No complex landing systems, no fuel wasted on final descent, no risk of landing failures. Just pure mechanical precision grabbing a skyscraper-sized rocket out of the sky. The catch fittings on Flight 10 are testing whether Starship's structure can handle the enormous forces of being grabbed by a mechanical claw, traveling at supersonic speeds. To understand why Flight 10 is so critical, we need to examine what went catastrophically wrong during Flight 9. Both vehicles exploded spectacularly, but the real story is more shocking than the explosions themselves. The booster explosion was actually planned. SpaceX deliberately pushed it to a 17-degree angle of attack, so extreme it stressed the fuel transfer tube beyond breaking point. When methane and liquid oxygen mixed, the result was what engineers politely call an energetic event. Translation, massive explosion. The FAA called this destruction expected under their test damage exceptions. SpaceX knew it would probably explode and did it anyway to gather data on absolute performance limits. But the real disaster was Starship itself. Five minutes into flight, sensors detected methane leaking into the nose cone. The fuel tank lost pressure, the rocket's balance went haywire, and liquid methane started sloshing around in areas where it should never exist. The spacecraft's autopilot literally refused to open payload doors. During re-entry, Starship tumbled so violently that ground control lost contact before it broke apart at 59 kilometers altitude. The culprit? A tiny $100 component called a pressurization system diffuser, basically a fuel flow controller. This single part failure destroyed a $3 billion spacecraft and taught SpaceX a crucial lesson about Mars mission reliability. SpaceX's fix reveals their true Mars timeline. They redesigned the fuel diffuser with 50% larger diameter and subjected it to tests simulating 10 times expected service life. They literally tortured this component until certain it wouldn't fail. But the real breakthrough is what this teaches about Mars mission requirements. On Mars, there are no spare parts, no repair facilities, no rescue missions. Every component must work flawlessly for years in the harshest environment imaginable. Flight 9's lessons are being built into every system on future Mars-bound starships, redundant fuel systems, backup pressurization, multiple failure modes. 
Everything designed to keep working when things go wrong, 140 million miles from Earth. Based on Flight 10's test objectives, we can reverse engineer SpaceX's actual Mars mission schedule, and it's much more aggressive than they publicly admit. Engine restarts in space? That's for Earth to Mars transfer burns. Heat shield improvements? Mars atmospheric entry requirements? Payload deployment? Dropping supplies and habitats on Mars surface? Every single test on Flight 10 is specifically designed for Mars mission capabilities. The rocket flip saves fuel for return journeys. Engine reliability prevents crew from being stranded. Heat shields ensure safe Mars landing. Connect the dots. SpaceX is planning crewed Mars missions within four to six years, not the 10 to 15 years they publicly claim. But there's one final secret that makes all of this possible. The revolutionary Raptor 3 engine that will power Block 2 starships. When SpaceX first revealed Raptor 3, even competitors thought it was fake. Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, publicly stated the images had to be manipulated because the engine looked impossible. It wasn't fake. It was just so advanced that industry experts couldn't believe it was real. Raptor 3 produces 280 tons of thrust, 30% more than the original Raptor, while weighing 400 kilograms less. The engine looks like a skeleton compared to previous versions because SpaceX applied Musk's algorithm. The best part is no part. They eliminated thousands of components by integrating multiple systems into single pieces using advanced 3D metal printing. Fewer parts mean fewer failure points. If a component doesn't exist, it can't break. This isn't just about reliability, it's about Mars manufacturing. On Mars, complexity kills. Simple integrated systems mean colonists can maintain and repair rockets with basic tools instead of requiring specialized facilities. Musk recently revealed something that changes everything we thought we knew about Starship's future. Block 3 won't just be bigger, it will be a completely different class of rocket. Current Starship is 9 meters wide. Block 3 could expand to 12 meters. The original interplanetary transport system diameter from 2017. That means 42 Raptor 3 engines producing 11,760 tons of thrust. That's three times more powerful than the Saturn V moon rocket. We're not talking about incremental improvements. This is a rocket that breaks the game entirely. With 300 tons to orbit capability while remaining reusable, Block 3 Starship would match the legendary Sea Dragon concept, except Sea Dragon was never built. This will be. The implications are staggering. Mars missions carrying entire city modules, asteroid mining operations, moon bases built in months instead of decades. We're looking at capabilities so massive they redefine what's possible in space. Flight 10 isn't just another test flight. It's the proving ground for technologies that will make humanity a multi-planetary species within this decade. The impossible rocket flip isn't about showing off. It's about maximizing payload to build Mars cities. The engine shutdown test isn't about redundancy. It's about keeping colonists alive when they're farther from Earth than anyone has ever been. The heat shield gamble isn't about cost savings. It's about creating reusable systems that can operate for years on Mars without Earth-based maintenance. Every insane test Musk is running on Flight 10 serves one ultimate purpose, turning science fiction into reality before 2030. Engineers call it impossible because they're thinking like engineers. Musk is thinking like a species trying to survive beyond Earth. That's the difference between innovation and revolution. And on August 24th, we'll find out if revolution wins. So here's what we know. August 24th isn't just another test flight. It's the moment Musk proves that impossible is just another word for not yet engineered. The rocket flip that shocked engineers, its fuel efficiency disguised as insanity, the deliberate engine shutdowns, life insurance for Mars colonists, the heat shield gamble, the difference between single-use rockets and true reusability. Every crazy decision serves one ultimate goal, making humanity a multi-planetary species before 2030. But here's the question that keeps me awake at night. What happens when these tests succeed? When Starship becomes as routine as a Falcon 9 launch? When Mars missions shift from science fiction to weekend news? We're watching the birth of technologies that will define the next century of human civilization. The children born today might grow up considering Mars just another destination. 
Are we ready for a future where the impossible becomes inevitable? Let me know what you think will happen when Flight 10 launches. Will it be humanity's next giant leap? Or will we get another spectacular lesson in the price of pushing boundaries? The countdown to our multi-planetary future starts now. Three fatal engineering failures just killed Elon Musk's Mars dream and could kill astronauts next. Ship 36 exploded instantly during fuel loading. Ship 35 flooded with deadly methane at 59 kilometers altitude. The fuel tube, bigger than Falcon 9, shattered under mystery forces. Here's the terrifying truth. SpaceX knew these flaws were lethal, but launched anyway. What secret discovery forced them to risk human lives? Let's dive right in. Here's what nobody tells you about SpaceX's success story. On May 27, everything looked perfect. Too perfect. The first reused Super Heavy booster fired all 33 Raptor engines flawlessly, but SpaceX was secretly conducting an experiment that would destroy everything. They programmed the booster to dive back to Earth at a brutal 17-degree angle steeper than any previous flight. Why? Because they needed data for Mars missions, where re-entry speeds are absolutely devastating. But here's the terrifying part. They knew this test would likely kill the booster. Picture this. Your car's fuel line is designed for normal driving, but you decide to test it during a Formula One crash. That's exactly what happened to Super Heavy's fuel transfer tube, a massive pipeline bigger than an entire Falcon 9 rocket. At 382 seconds into flight, the impossible happened. The aerodynamic forces crushed the transfer tube like a soda can. Methane and liquid oxygen mixed in a deadly cocktail, and the booster vanished in a fireball just one kilometer above the ocean. But here's the twist that changes everything. Space Ace engineers had run the calculations. They knew the tube would fail. They flew anyway because they discovered something that would haunt Mars colonization forever. The current design couldn't survive deep space re-entry. Every Mars mission would end in catastrophic failure. They had to break it to save the future. But at what cost? Three minutes into what should have been routine, 